Have you lost all courage? All faith? A moment ago, we thought that they'd come for us. We were sure it was the end. But it wasn't the end. We're alive, safe. We thank thee, O Lord our God, that in thy infinite mercy thou hast again seen fit to spare us. Come on, Anna. The song. The song. Around the feast of gathering, complete jubilation. Happiest of seasons, now is here. Many are the reasons for good cheer. Together, we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. So hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. Hi! Hear us rejoicing and merrily voicing the Hanukkah song that we sing. Another new year has begun and we find ourselves still in our hiding place. We've been here now for one year, five months, and 25 days. It seems that our life is at a standstill. We are all a little thinner. The Fondon's discussions are as violent as ever. Mother still does not understand me, but then I don't understand her either. There is one great change, however. A change in myself. I read somewhere that girls of my age don't feel quite certain of themselves. That they become quiet within and begin thinking of the miracle that is taking place in their bodies. I think what is happening to me is so wonderful. Not only what can be seen, but what is taking place inside. Each time it has happened, I have a feeling that I have a sweet secret. And in spite of my pain, I long for the time when I shall feel that secret inside me again. It's me. Make up everybody, Weep is here! Mr. Fondon always gets a little bit more. That's a lie. She always gets the same. Please, please. You see what a little sugar cake does to us? It goes right to our heads. Here you are, Mrs. Crump. Thank you. Are you sure you want to have some cake? No, really. I have to go in a minute. Maybe Bushy went back to our house. They say that cats. Did you ever get over there? I mean, do you suppose you could? I'll try, Peter. The first minute I get, I'll try. But I'm afraid we've been gone a week. 
Make up your mind. Already someone's had a nice big dinner from that cat. This is delicious meat. Mmm, delicious. And Dirk's in luck to get a girl who can bake drink. I have to run. Dirk's taking me to a party tonight. Oh, how heavenly. Remember now what everyone is wearing and what you have to eat and everything so you can tell us tomorrow. I'll give you a full report. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Just a moment, meat. There's something I'd like you to do for me. Woody? Woody, what are you doing? Woody, where are you going? What's wrong? Father says he's going to sell her fur coat. She's crazy about that old fur coat. Is it possible? Is it possible that anyone is so silly as to worry about a fur coat at times like this? It's still your darn business. And if you say one more thing, I'll, I'll take you. Ah! No, don't you dare take that! You hear it's mine! You didn't give it to me! My father gave it to me! You have no right! Just a little, uh discussion over the advisability of selling this coat. And as I have often reminded Mrs. Fontan, it's very selfish of her to keep it when people outside are in such desperate need of clothing. Uh, so if you will please to sell it for us, it should fetch a good price. Uh, and by the way, will you get me cigarettes? I don't care what kind they are. Get all you can. It's terribly difficult to get them, Mr. Fontan, but I'll try. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Are you sure you won't have some cake? I better not. You're still feeling badly? What does the doctor say? I haven't been to him. No, just scroll her. Oh, I've tried. We can't get near doctor these days. They're so busy. After weeks, I finally managed to get one on the telephone. I told him I'd like to make an appointment. I wasn't feeling very well. You know what he answers over the telephone? Stick out your tongue. <laughs> I have some contracts here. I wonder if you'd look them over with me? Of course. If we can go downstairs. Excuse me, I will keep them about a minute. What's happened? Something's happened, hasn't it, Mrs. Collar? No, really, I just want your father's advice. But what's happened? I know it, something's gone wrong. If it's something that concerns us here, it's better that we all hear it. But, the children. But they'd imagine would be worse than any reality. It's a man in the story. I don't know whether or not you remember him. Carl, about 50 heavy set, nearsighted. He came with us just before you left. He was from Utrecht? That's a man. A couple of weeks ago, when I was in the storeroom, he closed the door and asked me, how's Mr. Fromm? What do you hear from Mr. Fromm? I told him I only knew that there was a rumor that you were in Switzerland. He said he heard the rumor too, but he thought I might know something more. I ignored it. But then the thing happened yesterday. He brought some invoices into the office for me to sign. As I was going through them, I looked up. Standing, staring at the bookcase. The bookcase that hides your door. He said he remembered a door there. Wasn't there a door there that used to go up to the loft? And then he told me he wanted more money. 20 guilders more a week. Blackmail! 20 guilders? Very modest blackmail. That's just the beginning. You know what I think? He was the thief who was down there that night. That's how he knows we're here. How was it left? What did you tell him? I told him I had to think about it. What should I do? Pay him the money and take a chance of firing him, or what? I don't know. For God's sakes, don't fire him. Keep him here where you can have your eye on him. Is it so much that he's asking? Why does I pay nowadays? He could get an award plan, but this is an award plan. Mind you, I don't even know if he knows, or if he doesn't know. Offer him half. Then they'll soon find out if it's blackmail or not. And if it is? We've got to pay anything he asks. We've got to pay. Let's decide that when the time comes. This may all be my imagination. You get to a point these days where you suspect everyone and everything. Again and again, from a simple look or word, I found myself. That's the telephone. What does that mean, the telephone ringing on a holiday? That's my daughter. I told her I had some papers in the office for a day this time. <coughs> Call me there when she got out of work. I'll offer him half then. Goodbye. We'll hope for the best. Bye. Bye. You thank yourself for this, crashing the chair. I tell you, it's just a question of time now. Sometimes I wish the end would come. Whatever it is. We're good. Ted, at least we know where we were. You should be ashamed of yourself speaking that way. Think of how lucky we are. Think of the thousands of people dying in the war every day. Think of the people in the concentration camps. What's the good of that? What's the good of thinking of misery when you're already miserable? That's stupid. Oh, no. We're young. Margaret and Peter and I, you grown-ups have had your chance, but look at us. If 
we begin thinking of all the horror in the world, we're lost. We're trying to hold on to some kind of ideals with everything. Ideals, hopes, everything are being destroyed. Oh, Anna. It isn't our fault. The world is in such a mess. We weren't around when all this started. Anna. So don't try and take it out on us. She talks as if we started the war. And did we start the war? She left her cake. <laughs> <laughs> You left this. Thanks. I thought you were fine just now. You know just how to talk to them. You know just how to say it. I'm no good. I never had to think. Especially when I'm mad. That do so, when he said that about Mushi, someone eating him, all I could think was I want to eat him. I want to give him such a baby. That's what I used to do when there was an argument, an argument at school. That's the way I put it here. And an old man like that, it wouldn't be so good. You're making a big mistake about me. I do it all wrong. I say too much. I go too far. I hurt people's feelings. I think you're fine. But what I'm trying to say, if it weren't for you around here, I don't know. What I mean, starts, or an argument, I duck in there. You're lucky. Having a room to go to? His lordship is always here. I hardly ever get a minute alone. When they start in on me, I can't duck away. I have to stand there and take you. You gave some of it back just now. I get so mad. They form their opinions about everything. But we, we're still trying to find out. We have problems here that no other people our age have ever had. And just when you think you've solved them, something comes along and bang, you have to start all over again. At least you've got someone you can talk to. Not really. Mother, I never discuss anything serious with her. She doesn't understand. Father's all right. We can talk about everything. Everything that is but one thing. Mother. He simply won't talk about her. I don't think you can be really intimate with anyone if you hold something back. Do you? I think your father's fine. Oh, he is, Peter. He is. He's the only one who's ever given me the feeling that I have any sense. <laughs> but anyway, nothing can take the place of school. Your friends of your own age are near your own age, can it? I suppose you miss your friends at all. It isn't just... Isn't it funny? You and I, here we've been seeing each other every minute for almost a year and a half, and this is the first time we've ever really talked. It helps a lot to have someone to talk to, don't you think? It helps to let off steam. Well, any time you want to let off steam, you can come into my room. I can get up an awful lot of steam. You'll have to be careful how you say that. It's all right with me. Do you mean it? I said it, didn't I? We've had bad news. The people from whom we've got our ration books have been arrested. So we've had to cut down on our food. Our stomachs are so empty that they rumble and make strange noises, all in different keys. Mr. Fondons is deep and low with a bass fiddle. Mine is high, whistling like a flute. As we all sit around waiting for supper, it's like an orchestra, tuning up. It only needs Toscanini to raise his baton and we'd be off in the ride of the Valkyries. Monday the 6th of March, 1944. Mrs. Crawler's in the hospital. It seems she has ulcers. Pim says we are her ulcers. Meep has to run the business, and us too. The Americans have landed in the southern tip of Italy. 
Father looks for an early finish to the war. Mr. Dussel is waiting every day for the warehouse man to demand more money. Have I been skipping around too much from one subject to another? I can't help it. I feel that spring is coming. I feel it in my whole body and soul. I feel utterly confused. I am longing, so longing for everything. For friends, for someone to talk to. Someone who understands. Someone young, who feels as I do. Maybe later. 
I remember when I got that. I won it. I bet Yopia could eat five ice cream cones. We'd all been playing ping pong at her house. We used to have heavenly times. We finished up with ice cream at the Delphi of the Oasis, where Jews were allowed. There'd always be a lot of boys. We'd laugh and joke. I'd like to go back to it for a few days or a week. But after that, I know I'd be bored to death. I think much more seriously about life now. I want to be a journalist or something. I'd love to write. What do you want to do? I thought I might go off someplace, work on a farm or something. Some job that doesn't take much brains. You shouldn't talk that way. You have the most awful inferiority complex. I know I'm not smart. That isn't true. You're much better than I am in dozens of things. Arithmetic and algebra. And, well, you're a million times better than I am in algebra. You like Margaret, don't you? Right from the start, you liked her much better than me. Oh, I don't know. That's all right. Everyone feels that way. Margaret's so good. She's sweet and bright and beautiful, and I'm not. I wouldn't say so. Oh, no, I'm not. I know that. I know I'm not a beauty. I never have been and never shall be. I don't agree at all. I think you're pretty. That's not true. And another thing. You've changed from that first time. I have? I used to think you were awful noisy. What do you think now, Peter? How have I changed? Well, you're, you're quieter. I'm glad you don't just hate me. I never said that. I bet when you get out of here, you'll never think of me again. That's crazy. I bet when you get back with all of your friends, you're going to say, now what did I ever see in that Mrs. Quack Quack? I haven't got any friends. Oh, Peter, of course you have. Everyone has friends. Not me. I don't want any. I get along all right without them. Does that mean you'll get along all right without me? I think of myself as your friend. No. If they were all like you, it would be different. Peter, did you ever kiss a girl? Yes, once. That picture's crooked. Was she pretty? Huh? The girl that you kissed? I don't know. I was blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> it was at a party. One of those kissing games. Oh. I don't suppose that really counts, does it? It didn't with me. I'd been kissed twice. Once a man I'd never seen before. He kissed me on the cheek when he picked me up off the ice and I was crying. And the other was Mr. Kupias, a friend of father's who kissed my hand. You wouldn't say those counted, would you? I wouldn't say so. I know almost for certain that Margaret would never kiss anyone, unless she was engaged to them. And I'm sure, too, that Mother never touched a man before Pim. But I don't know. Things are so different now. What do you think? Do you think a girl shouldn't kiss anyone unless she's engaged or something? It's so hard to know what to do. And here we are with the whole world falling around our ears. And you think, well, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. What do you think? I guess it depends on the girl. Some girls, anything they do is wrong. But others, well, it wouldn't necessarily be wrong with them. I've always thought that when two people... Nine o'clock. I have to go. That's right. Good night. You won't let them stop you coming. No. Sometime I might bring my diary. There's so many things in it that I want to talk over with you. There's a lot about you. What kinds of things? I wouldn't want you to see some of it. I thought you were a nothing, just the way you thought about me. Well, did you change your mind the way I changed my mind about you? Well, you'll see.
all know each other so well that if anyone starts to tell a story, the rest can finish it for him. We're having to cut down still further on our meals. What makes it worse, the rats have been at work again. They've carried off some of our precious food. Even Mr. Dusa wishes now that Mushi was here. Thursday, the 20th of April, 1944. Invasion fever is mounting every day. Meep tells us that people outside talk of nothing else. For myself, life has become much more pleasant. I often go to Pater's room after supper. Oh, don't think I'm in love, because I'm not. But it does make life much more bearable to have someone with whom you can exchange views. No more tonight. P.S. I must be honest. I must confess that I actually live for the next meeting. Is there anything lovelier than to sit under the skylight with the sun on your cheeks and have a darling boy in your arms? I admit now I'm glad the Fondant had a son, not a daughter. <gasps> I've outgrown another dress. That's the third. I'm having to wear Margaret's clothes after all. I'm working hard on my French, and I'm now reading La Belle Nevernaise. Take it up to him. 
The invasion seems temporarily to be bogged down. Mrs. Crawl has to have an operation which looks bad. The Gestapo have found the radio that was stolen. Mr. Dussel says they'll trace it back and back to the thief, and then it's just a matter of time till they get to us. Everyone is low. Even poor Pim can't raise their spirits. I have often been downcast myself, but never in despair. I can shake off everything if I write. But, and that is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living, even after my death. Another birthday has gone by, so now I'm 15. Already I know what I want. I have a goal, an opinion. There it goes again, the telephone. Mr. Funk, you hear? Yes, I hear. But this is the third time, Mr. Funk, the third time in quick succession. It's a signal. I tell you, it's me trying to get us. For some reason, she can't come to us, and she's trying to warn us of something. Please, please. There's something has happened, Mr. Funk. For three days now, we've got a bit to see us. And today, a man has not come to work. There hasn't been a sound in the building. Perhaps it's Sunday. We may have lost track of the days. And you with the diary there, what day is it? I don't lose track of days. I know exactly what day it is. It's Friday, the 4th of August. Friday, not a man at work? I tell you, Mrs. Crawler is dead. That's the only explanation. She's dead and they've closed down the building. And Meep's trying to tell us. She never telephoned us here. Mr. Prompt, answer that. Thank you. Answer it. No. Just pick it up and listen. You don't have to speak. Just listen and see if it's me. For God's sakes, I ask you. No, I told you no. I'll do nothing that might let anyone know we're in the building. Bronx, right. There's no need to tell us what side you're on. You be here patiently, quietly. I believe that help will come. I'm going down. <laughs> Mr. 
Too late. So we just wait here until we die. I can't stand it. I'll kill myself. I'll kill myself. For God's sake, stop it. I think you want me to do it. I think you want me to well, die. Whose fault is it we're here? Oh, we could have been safe somewhere. In America or Switzerland. But no. No. You wouldn't leave when I wanted to. You couldn't leave your things. You couldn't leave your precious furniture. Don't touch me. something doesn't happen soon, if we don't get out of here, I can't stand much more of it. I wish you had a religion, Peter. No oh, thanks. Not me. I don't mean you have to be orthodox or believe in heaven and hell and purgatory and things. I just need some religion. It doesn't matter what, just to believe in something. And I think of all that's out there, the trees and flowers and seagulls. And I think of the dearness of you, Peter, and the goodness of the people we know. Meek, Mrs. Crawler, Dirk, the vegetable man, all risking their lives for us every day. When I think of these good things, I'm not afraid anymore. I find myself and God and I... It's fine. But when I begin to think, I get mad. Look at us, hiding out here for two years, not able to move, caught here like waiting for them to come and get us. Not for what? We're not the only people that have had to suffer. There have always been people that have had to, sometimes one race and sometimes another. And this will make me feel any better. I know it's terrible trying to have any faith when people are doing such horrible. <coughs> but you know what I sometimes think? I think the world may be going through a phase, just the way I was with Mother. It'll pass, maybe not for hundreds of years, but someday. I still believe, in spite of everything, that people are really good at heart. I want to see something now, not a thousand years from now. But Peter, if you only look at it as part of a great pattern, that we're just a little minute in life. Listen to us, going at each other like a couple of stupid grown-ups. Look at the sky now, Peter. Isn't it lovely? Someday, when we're outside again, I'm going... past few years, we have lived in fear. And how we can live in hope. Thank you. 
And so it seems our stay here is over. They're waiting for us now. They've allowed us five minutes to get our things. We can each take a bag and whatever will hold of clothing. Nothing else. So, dear diary, that means I must leave you behind. Goodbye for a while. P.S. Please, please, me, or Miss Crawler, or anyone else, if you should find this diary, will you please keep it safe for me? Because someday, I hope... to say this, is that anyone could be happy in a concentration camp, but Anna was happy in the camp in Holland where they first took us. After two years of being shut up in these rooms, she could be out, out of the sunshine and the fresh airs that she loved. A little more? Yes, thank you. Good. The British and Americans were sweeping through France. We were sure they'd get to us in time. In September, we were told that we were to be shipped to Poland. The men to one camp, the women to another. I was sent to Auschwitz. They went to Belzen. In January, we were freed. The few of us who were left. The war wasn't yet over, so it took us a long time to get home. We'd be sent here and there, behind the lines where we'd be safe. Each time our train would stop at a siding or a crossing, we'd all get out and go from group to group. Where were you? Were you at Belzen? At Buchenwald? At, Ma at Mauthausen? Is it possible that you knew my wife? Did you ever see my husband? My son? My daughter? That's how I found out about my wife's death. Of Margaret Zabondon's hater. Do so. But Anna, I still hoped. Yesterday, I went to Rotterdam. I heard, I heard of a woman there. She'd been in Belgium with Anna. I know now. In spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. She puts me to shame. Um, 
We, okay. yeah. So we had two directors this time because we had a, Ms. Chase had a baby. Um, so we let the show them, without them, I mean, they, were, they put so much effort. Janet came in, um, Janet Miller, she came in and she worked with us for two months and you guys both come up.